Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Yep, happy Thursday. We got, uh, let's see, assuming we get through this one, we've got six more days until Christmas. So uh, y'all probably getting excited about that. Uh, hope everybody's doing well today. It looks like we already got a good, uh, good little crowd over there in the chat. So let me check out the comments here looks like javi was first one here this morning 4 a.m got on the tube and responded to comments good 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 uh where can you get some coffee you're in the right place hitch hamilton in the house smoking 52 degrees here in southwest florida this morning larry galt good morning larry how are you Earl Walker says, morning, everyone. Last coffee clash before going south for two weeks warmer weather. It's 12 degrees here in Ohio. I don't blame you. <laughs> if I had to wake up to that kind of temperature every morning, I'd, I'd want to head south, too. Uh, Clyde Labonte says, 15, where he's at. Kevin Ailes, uh, how you doing this morning or this afternoon, whichever it may be. Uh, Ray Whitaker says, coffee is hot. Yeah, buddy. Watching over on the Facebook. Eddie Hall is with us this morning. Good morning, Eddie. Troy Pritchard. Good morning, everybody. Happy Throwback Thursday. I hadn't even looked for a picture. I'll have to see if I can scrounge one up back there. Um, good morning from Oklahoma. Oh, I guess I should put it up here, hadn't I? Good morning from Oklahoma. It's 34 degrees here in Mustang, Oklahoma. Man. Oh, that's cold. Who, who is Thursday? Here's Janet. Watching over on Facebook. Glad to have you with us on the coffee sessions, Janet. Steven Toronto says good morning. LB Sharp reporting in says it's 18 in Geronimo, Oklahoma. Man, that's cold. Ray says snow plow. Snow is plowed and roads okay now. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I know they had a bunch of it. I've seen the pictures they were posting on Facebook. Scott Gritton, good morning, sir. JJ Woodshop, good morning, Jesse. Patrick's workshop in the house. Hello, Patrick's. How you doing? All right. Man, it's, uh, yes, it's cold everywhere. It was 29 this morning, and I don't think it's warmed up much. Let's see if it'll say on my phone here. Uh, I don't know how I get that to come on. 31. Yeah, it's up, gone up two degrees since I got up this morning. And I just came back from walking to the mailbox this morning. Uh, in my little short sleeve shirt here, so <laughs> I can confirm that it is a wee bit nippy out there this morning. Frost on the windshield, frost on the ground. Uh, but it's all good. It's all good. I looked at the uh, extended forecast on my little Fox 5 weather app. And uh, according to them, it's going to be... 65 degrees on Tuesday, which is Christmas Eve, and about 65 on uh, Christmas Day. So I can live with that. Yeah, I can, I can, I can live with that. That's okay. Patrick said it's 39 out there in Cali. Holy cow. Y'all must be going nuts out there. Todd says 10 degrees here in Maine. 
it says it's 68 here in his house. <laughs> yeah, that's about what temperature this here too. Uh, right where I'm sitting anyway. The Willie 1951. Good morning from Collinsville, Oklahoma. And it's cold here. Yeah. Yeah, I've had uh, a lot of you Oklahoma guys saying it's cold. Rusty Taylor's in the house. Good morning, Rusty. What's going on? Uh, three more days until winter. Yeah. Yeah. Ray says you are awake now then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely awake when you walk outside and it 29 degree hits you. Gerald Vance is in the house. How you doing, Gerald? Good to see you uh, here on the coffee sessions. Obviously, don't know what it is outside, but the AC is still on here. Yeah. <laughs> There's always that one guy, you know. All right, let's see. Barry Curtis, you know it's going to be a great day when a coworker brings in an awesome pound cake for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rusty Taylor wants to know, anyone made a branding iron to mark your projects? Um, I have not because I use my little laser, but there are some folks who use branding irons, and I don't know if the, who they had made them. Uh, anybody else is out there in the chat and knows somebody? I, I, I want to say, uh, well, I don't know if they still make them, so I'm not going to say. But uh, there are some folks that make them. In fact, I could probably make you one, Rusty. I could machine you something to, uh, you know, I've seen, well, one guy knows uh, Ken Moon. He just uses a, and I don't know who made his branding iron. He just uses like a torch, a little hand torch, and heats it up and then presses it into the bottom of his bowls. Um, let's see. We got Dave Clemens in the house, 12 degrees. Holy cow. Bob Sims. Afternoon, everyone from the UK. Good morning to you, Bob. Or afternoon, I guess it might be now. Ryan Ballard says, Rusty decided to go. Oh, yeah. Ryan decided to go laser instead of an iron. Laser's the stuff if you got, you know, a CNC to do it with. Um, Hobby says he's got a branding iron he made with his CNC. Yeah. Yeah. Laser's just so much... Uh, so much easier but i mean of course you gotta have the cnc and a laser and all that but it's i think it makes a much better brand than than a branding iron but that's just me uh, he says i have and still do on my plasma table okay Steve Gronsky says, I didn't make the branding iron. My son, son bought me one through Rockler. Yeah, Rockler will sell them. I think if you just send them, you know, tell them what you want on it. Uh, of course, if you got a logo, I suppose you'd have to send them a, a file of some kind. Uh, later, I searched on the Internet, found a place that sells them so cheap. It's not worth the trouble. Yeah. Yeah, Rusty says he'll hunt up some aluminum. Yeah, I got a chunk if, uh, if you can't find any, Rusty. Um, I can try to make you what you want. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see. What's all going on with folks today? It's uh, I watched an interesting... Uh, documentary last night y'all y'all know who joe newman is and i can hear the keyboards clicking now google searching joe newman uh, I, I watched an interesting documentary using my fire stick janet uh, and it was uh, on amazon the Amazon Prime channel thing. So if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get that. And um, good, good, uh, good little documentary called Newman. Very interesting. Some of you uh, 
nerdy guys might like it. Hobby says 30 bucks or $80 for electric. Is that what Rockler sells them for? Is that where you're getting that? Any Hall says, I've not tried it, but they have a scorch marker that when you use a heat gun or torch. Yeah. Hmm. Todd says he's sanding drywall. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I don't mess with drywall. I'm not good at it, and I don't want to get good at it, so. Oh, we got some excitement going on out there. I don't know what it is. Um, boys all uh, fussing about something over there. Bob's trying to finish up his Christmas shopping. Okay. Um, Taking one of our dogs to the vet because two of the dogs got into a fight and one has a little wound. Oh, man. They got to get along. They should get along good. Rocky, when I first got Jack, you know, Rocky's been around here a long time. He's like, you know, he's the top dog around here. And when I first got Jack, he was much smaller than he is now. What I'm trying to say is he wasn't fat then. I'm trying to be nice. Um, but uh, they used to get in some little squabbles because Rocky would have to let him know that, hey, you know, this is my house. This is how it goes. And uh, so Jack Jack realizes that he's number two. You know, he knows what the what the pecking order is. But uh, since then, you know, Jack is now back. Back then, I think Jack, you know, Rocky was about seventy-five pounds, and Jack was probably I don't know sixty pounds, maybe. Well, now Jack is—I haven't even taken him to have him weighed lately, but I guarantee you he's pushing one twenty, and Rocky's still at seventy-five. So even though Jack is so big and beefy and you know could probably take rocky it's still i guess they still have that little communication thing like hey i'm old but i'm still top dog so you watch your step because rocky will still growl at him stuff and you can tell jack's still a little bit scared of rocky so <laughs> janet says Rocky's number one, Jack's number two, Dave's number three. You got it. That's that's the way the pecking order works around around this place. Uh, it's always funny when I go to the grocery store because sometimes I'll make these little emergency trips when we're when we're either running low on dog treats or or running out of them. And I'll you know and then I'll pick you know pick up something like I'll pick up a thing of bologna or something and then I've got like you know, $30 worth of dog treats and stuff. And the, the cashiers always look at me funny, like, hmm, you see who eats good at that house. But, uh, but yeah, the old days, <laughs> number three at, at, uh, at this house. But, uh, that's all right. I wouldn't have it any other way. I would. Let's see. Ryan says, I will check that out, Dave. I'm watching Carnival Row on prime now i don't know what carnival row is maybe i should check that out yeah i think you would you in particular ryan i think you would really like that show it's just called newman it's about an hour and a half long maybe an hour and 45 minutes something like that uh, but it was really cool really cool documentary i liked it David Mitchell says, good morning from Kentucky. Good morning, sir. Dave says, the wounded one is about 20 pounds, 11-year-old, and thinks she's bigger than the other one is about 50. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them little dogs, man, they have no fear. Um, you know, chihuahuas, man, those are like the meanest dogs ever. 
to me that I'd, I'd rather i'd rather be in a yard with a pit bull than i would a, a chihuahua um they sneak up behind you i remember i used to years ago i used to have a like a i worked for a pest control company and i used to have to go on this route and i always didn't like the houses that had the little little what i call little yappy dogs um because they would bark at you and, you know, and they'd back up as you're walking towards them. And then they kind of circle around and they wait for you to walk past. And they come up behind you and bite you on the ankle. Well, you got to watch them. But, uh, yeah, these, uh, let's see. I'm missing some comments here. It says, it's time to get your Christmas gifts in the mail. There's my big old boy right here. Rocky's laying down over here. It's just amazing how much different they are in size. Jack is huge. Um, let's see what else I missed here. Yeah, you have to tell me about that Carnival Row, Ryan, or else I'll check it out. Oh, no. He says it's on Prime. Yeah, I'll check that out and see what that's about. Morning from the deep free southern Michigan. Yeah. It's uh it's sure enough cold up there. Steve says I call them ankle biters, yeah. Yeah. I just always call all them little dogs yappy dogs because when they bark, you know, it's not a it's not a big woof like a big dog. It's a yeah. So I just call them yappy little dogs. Dave says, yeah, he's a rat terrier, more rat than terrier. <laughs> tried, tried to steal the bone from the bigger one, yeah. Yeah, they they protect them uh, bones and stuff. It's funny, uh, I should probably set up the camera sometime and just shoot some, just let it run and shoot some video around here. But Jack, uh, he always loves those rubber things. We always just call them chewies. But uh, he's always wanting to play with those. If he'll get one of those while I'm sitting there trying to watch TV or the, something, and he's always bringing it up, sitting, you know, trying to get me to take it. And of course, he he was not going to give it to me. He's going to hold on to it. And uh, but if I do get it, and I throw it, and if I throw it anywhere near Rocky, he he won't go get it. And in fact, if if it's if Rocky's where he can get up, a lot of times he don't even want to get up. But if he can, he'll go he'll go pick it up, bring it over, and set it down, and then lay it back down beside it. And then Jack won't go get it. And Rocky don't really want it; he just don't want Jack to have any fun. You know, he's he's like me; he's a grumpy old man. So, uh, but yeah, it's funny to watch him over those chewies. And Jack will even, when I say, of course, I can't say it now because they're going to jump up if I do. But every morning when I say, okay, let's go to the mailbox, you know, Jack will run and grab one of those chewies and take it out with him. And then usually when he gets ready to do his business, he'll set it down somewhere and go off and wander around a little bit. Well, then I go over and grab it, throw it up in the air, and it bounces. And he, oh, man, he loves, loves those chewies. So, it says he has a ratter. My daughter has a chewini. Like, what is that, like a dachshund, um, a chihuahua dachshund or something? Um, dachshunds are cool little dogs. Uh, my uh, my ex-wife. As far as I know, he's still around, but she's got that little dachshund named Booger. Uh, he was a cool little dog. And I, like I said, I'm not a fan of the, the little dog. I like all dogs, but I'm not. I, I like the big dogs. Ryan says, Carnival Row is basically a detective drama set in mystical world similar to the late 1800s. Yeah, okay. Um, the other thing I've watched a few of lately, which is, uh, 
I don't know why I watch stuff like that. It's just, you know, I go in there because I, I put the, I moved the fire stick to the TV in the bedroom. So I, sometimes I, you know, if I'm tired and I'm like, hey, let me go into bed, but you can't go to sleep. So you just turn something on and, you know, and just have it playing. So, but I've, I've watched, um, and it's on Amazon, it's on that Amazon Prime thing, app, whatever it is. But it's, uh, it's a series about serial killers. And the first one I watched, it was, uh, it had stuff, you know, I guess the, what they're calling the original serial killer was, uh, Jack the Ripper over in London. Um, and of course the only thing that's really interesting about that is that he was never caught. Um, so, you know, they don't know who he was or why he did it or anything like that. So that's interesting. And then, um, I, I get, and it's like a season one, season two type thing. So the next night I watched another one and it was, uh, they had the son of Sam on there. And um, the Green Green River Killer or something, and I think if I'm not mistaken, that's another one that they never caught. He just, well, I say he, I just assume it's a he, you know, they do, but um, he just did it for a while and then stopped, and they never never caught him. Of course, David Berkowitz was the son of Sam, and. Uh, and they also talked about, um, yeah, what's the guy's name? Theodore Bundy, Ted Bundy, which he, you know, he had a big body count. So he's, <laughs> his body count was getting up there with the Clintons. <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe. But um, anyway, just some of the weird stuff I watch. Just because I basically when I when I go look for something, I don't you know if I'm trying to go to sleep and I'm thinking, well, I'll put something on and um, you know if I fall asleep while it's on, you know, it doesn't matter whether I see it or not. But you know, you don't want to spend. 45 minutes looking for something to watch. And by then I'm, you know, I'm ready to go to sleep then anyway. So, but I usually just try to pick something quick and it's just, that's just something that happened to be popped up on the, on the uh, screen. And they're kind of interesting. Really. I like, I like some of that stuff. Not that I ever want to grow up and be a serial killer, but it's interesting to have people's minds think and how and how they can get away with that stuff for quite a while sometimes yeah of course a lot of it may be luck but it's weird 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 and i see we're we're still talking about dogs over here two german shepherds i like german shepherds they're cool dogs had four greyhounds from the track, three at one time for about 10 years. Man, I bet that was a handful. Oh, he's changed that. Look at Hitch. He's changed his uh, profile pic or whatever that is, avatar. And that looks like the, the Hitchster, a much, much younger Hitchster playing his uh, bass. How old were you in that pic, Hitch? You look really young from what I can see. Um, yeah, it'll be sharp says my two sons raised a male and female pit bulls. The female died after 15 years old. The male died three months later. It was a really sad day for the whole family. Yeah. I tell you what dogs are, um, they're a part of the family for me. They are my family pretty much. Um, uh, I don't know what I'll do when, when that time comes, I don't even like to think about that. You know, Rocky's uh, 13, and, you know, like I mentioned the other day, he's already, you can tell he can't see quite as good. Um, 
can't uh, can't hear that good unless he's ignoring me. But I think I really think he's getting where he can't can't hear as good, and his mobility is not as good. I keep putting that glucosamine or whatever stuff in his food. Try to keep his joints lubricated a little bit. But yeah, he's got some some bad arthritis or whatever they call it in dogs. Janet says there was a guy named Holmes in Chicago in the 1800s. His story is very scary. Killed Penny Holmes. Okay. I'll have to check him out. Or maybe I just haven't got to that episode yet. But yeah, it's 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 I don't know why that stuff interests me. I guess it's just because, you know, you just wonder what what would how do those people sleep at night when they do some of that stuff they do to uh, to another human being and then go home, stop the diner, eat dinner, and carry on like it's a normal day. And you never know they you know they might be working right next to you and you don't even know it. That's, uh, well, of course, that, that's true for all kinds of crazy people, I guess. Uh, but anywho, well, I did set the timer this morning. Got about three minutes left before it goes off. So uh, we'll, uh, I may try to, uh, I may try to have a little surprise for y'all tomorrow. Let's see if I can, uh, let me, I'll look since uh, I think it's Troy always ask about the or always mentions the throwback Thursday. Let me see if I can find some kind of an old picture here. Um, I need my glasses for this one, probably. Um, I might be able to find something here pretty quick. Old throwback picture. Let's see what I got here. A lot of these I've already shown you, I think. I think I have. Let's see what this one is. Oh, that's just me as a little rug rat. Yeah, we'll show that one. This one is... Uh, Probably 60 years old, this picture. Um, it's uh, yours truly with, uh, I don't know what that is I got in my hand. Maybe a sucker or something? I don't know. Looks like I got my little, uh, my little overalls on. There's the, in the corner there on the side of the picture. You can see that old TV. So. <laughs> Well, it's on a different stand now. That might have been the original stand. Uh, but this is um, back in um, 1121 Waldemar Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana. And I was probably, I don't know, two or less. I don't know. Pictures probably around, taken around... Uh, I'm going to say about 1958, late 50s, maybe 1960, but for sure late, late 50s. So anyway, there you go. There's your uh, throwback Thursday, Troy. Uh, we had some, uh, <laughs> when I looked at, we had some pretty ugly Furniture looking stuff there, the drapes and the uh, those look like covers that are over that. And I wonder if that's, that's a Davenport because that's what mom used to always call it the Davenport. The old Ottoman. Yeah, some ugly looking furniture there, but that's the way it was back in. That's the way it was. It says I look scared. Yeah, I'm wondering. Uh, I'm looking back at somebody, looks like. 
Well, there's my little old timer. Bob Sam says smoking a pipe. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> I don't think it was a pipe. But I guess uh, I guess I'm gonna get off of here if I can find that magic button. Thank y'all so much for uh, coming and hanging out with me this morning. We'll try to find something better to talk about tomorrow when we talk about serial killers. <laughs> That's probably, probably not a very good topic to be talking about right here at uh, Christmas. Janet Moore says, maybe your mom just called you by your full name. Yeah, quite possibly. You know you're uh, about to get in trouble when they when they use all three of your names. Or at least your first and middle name. You know, you, you know you're in trouble then. So, yeah, Dave Clemens says, got to go, but and by. So we'll see you. All right, I'm going to find that magic button, and we're going to get out of here. And y'all come back tomorrow. It's Friday. Let's, uh, let's drink some coffee and shoot the breeze. Everybody have a good one. See y'all.